there, and welcome to a brand new episode of Delivering Marketing Joy. I am your host, Kirby Hossman, and joining me today is a legitimate rock star and influencer in our industry. He's the Director of National Accounts for Special Brands at HPG, Nick Latour. Thanks for joining me again, buddy. Kirby, you're, you're too nice. Uh, a rock star would indicate that I have some sort of, you know, actual uh, charisma, so... <laughs> But I appreciate it. No, oh, absolutely. We know you have charisma. We're going to talk a little bit about that. So I'll be honest with you. You The first question kind of is queued up to that. You're one of the people in the industry that I think does social and content creatively. A lot of people do it, but I feel like you put some extra time into trying to be creative around your social media and your content. Where do you look for inspiration for some of the fun stuff that you create? Yeah, I, I look outside of our industry uh, because, you know, as you mentioned, and most of your the viewers and listeners here know our our bubble, our, our promotional mm-hmm. products industry really well. Um, so I think we need to bring some stuff in from mainstream culture. Um, yeah. I love, I grew up loving Weird Al Yankovic, and <laughs> um, I'm a big fan of the Lonely Island, if you know those guys, Andy Samberg mm-hmm. and his, his crew. Um, so, you know, when it comes to like coming up with new ideas, I try the like, I guess specifically musically in any videos I do that those are, are great influences, but really just um, kind of pop culture in general. I think that we're all consumers of Nets, uh, Nets, Netflix and uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm on the computer on NetSuite too much. I think, but, <laughs> you know, Netflix and YouTube and these kind of things where, you know, there's, there's some kind of hacky stuff, but like for the most part, the, the, the pop culture kind of vibe I'm pulling from comedians and from people who are sort of doing things a little differently as well. Yeah, it makes total sense because, I, you know, when you can reference pop culture well, you know, again, creatively and having fun, then right away, you've almost got an audience that kind of, oh, okay, I get the joke. I get what's going on. So that makes that makes a ton of sense. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious, I mean, obviously you and I have talked social media and consistency and content marketing. We've talked about that before, but I'm curious about how has social changed for you over the past couple of years? It's gone from being something that, uh, you know, I, I kind of didn't really actually, I, I didn't take it too seriously, uh, into something where I realized that, you know, after a while it's, and I think maybe on another time you and I talked on, on this show you realize that um, that the more consistent you are and the more you put stuff out there, um, the more effect it has. Yeah. And likes aren't always the indicator. So totally I, I'll, right. I got comments. I'll tell you a little story. Recently, I went to um, uh, a couple of in-person events in our industry opening back up and I'm, I get to see people I haven't seen in 18 months or whatever. And some people I didn't even know. And a couple of people, um, six total actually people, because I remember this specifically, came up to me like, hey, hey, how's it going, man? Hey, Where's the Mondays with Nick? I was like, what do you, what, what, what do you mean? Like, yeah, your videos are awesome. I haven't seen any in a little while. What, what's the deal? And I don't, I'm not friends with this person. I don't even know them. They're another supplier, maybe yep. in the industry. I'm just meeting, but, but somehow this gets out there. Right. So to answer your initial question, I've taken it a lot more seriously and then put a lot more thought into what I am putting on social media because, you know, um, mm-hmm. people are paying attention whether we know it or not. So, yeah, I, I, I 100% agree. I think you and I are uh, broken from the same mold on this. My uh, kind of experience was like that at PPAI one year where uh, Bill Petrie and I do the podcast every week and, you know, you put it out there and it's got some viewers and, you know, whatever you don't really, it's, it, it, I think sometimes you think it's the same four people that are seeing it every time. And it was at Expo when I realized, oh my gosh, I don't know all the people that are seeing it. And it's not the same people every week, which is what gives it the growth. So it, that, that's where that consistency is super powerful. So I agree with you. Yeah. Um, so what's something that you recommend people start doing today to make their life, and, and it could be life or business, better? Oh, man. Um... Uh, the, the broad answer is breathe. Um, <laughs> yeah, no I, oxygen, no life, right? It, it's true. So, you know, working from home, I'm, I, I find this and, and I'm kind of, I'm half joking, but I find that the times I'm looking forward to in the day are the, the maybe eight to 10 minutes that I'll get up out of this little office and go downstairs, go outside and like literally just walk around my block yeah. and not, not, you know, sometimes I'm music, but sometimes I'm just zoning out and then come back. And um, I think that, I think we can all um, take a step back a little bit and and take our jobs very seriously and we're working hard, but 
look at the big picture a little bit, like zoom out to 36,000 feet yeah. and take it, take a look at what's, you know, what's kind of going on. Then we'll get back in the weeds again, of course. But um, I think just sort of breathe, take, take a, take a, take a moment. Yeah, I, dude, I think that's actually exceptional advice. I, I kind of thought you were taking a joke down there at first, but the reality of it is it's something that I struggle with, right? Like you get, so as you said, in the weeds, and I think that never over the last 18 months, I think we've realized this more than ever, that we need to take in oxygen. We need to, whether that's meditation, whether that's just taking a walk around the block, it's it's always been true, but I feel like more and more of us have had our eyes open to it, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I actually, I think from a work perspective, this can be applied sort of in the inverse where I know my customers or my customers, customers, the end users are going through the similar thing. So, Mm. you know, what can I do at work to provide some sort of uh, way for my customers to show exceptional marketing value and, and frankly care. A lot of the work stuff I'm working on, like at Batch and Bodega, we have these beautiful custom kits and we're finding that the way people receive stuff is almost most of the time now more important than what they're actually getting in the Mm -hmm. box. You get a, you get this box, you open up, there's a personalized note that says, Hey, Nick, thinking about you. I love you. And it's like, Whoa, like this is dumb, but I'm getting goosebumps because like, that's, it's just like, that's what marketing should be about, especially right now. Like we have to, you know, how I'm feeling, I know is how you're probably feeling and millions of other people. So tapping into that, like flipping around my just breathing, like maybe I can give someone else a chance to, to breathe with and, and smile. You know? Yeah. I've, it, again, I've heard um, uh, Bobby Lee, who talk about this and, and Bill Petrie talks about this. It's like when you're creating a pro uh, uh, a promotional campaign of some, they ask the question, what do you want the recipients to feel? And that's a, that's a super powerful question. And I think it kind of alludes to what you were talking about there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So uh, final question for you. You're doing great. I appreciate you taking the time. Um, what's the best advice you've heard recently that has sort of helped you? Yeah. And, and it's a little bit sort of um, selfish. I don't know if it's selfish, but um, there's a guy a lot of people know about uh, Gary V. Gainer V. Mm-hmm. Gary yep. Vaynerchuk, right? He's, 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 extremely viral. Like he's out there and he's got the great energy and all that. But what I've taken from just listening to some of the stuff he says, and it's, I think it's great advice is, um, is really to kind of focus on what you love and, and who you are and, 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 and take a little time just to do that. Um, I did this a couple of years ago, which is why that advice really kind of reinforces this feeling. Uh, I started doing these dumb, goofy videos not, not never asked to, I just thought, let me, what do I enjoy doing? I like making people laugh and like, you know, putting sort of a levity on things. And I pulled it into my work with videos and little spoofy music videos and stuff. And I found that I would spend sometimes 15, 16 hours a week, like only on the weekends, just editing and coming up with new ideas and new songs. And I just, I couldn't have been almost happier. I was working right. way more, but this is where I needed to be. And, and so what I'm pulling from, and the answer to your question is like, really, it sounds kind of cliche, but something you love doing and that you enjoy doing, you're going to do it better anyway. So like, go for that. I do this. I tell my daughter, I'm like, let's figure out what you really love doing. Let's do a bunch of stuff, a bunch of things. Yeah. And whatever you find that you love, you know, we'll nurture that and we'll work on it and you'll get good at it. So that is, that's fabulous advice. And I, I read, I read recently that they said that, you know, when you are working on something you don't care about, we're working really hard on something you don't care about you because you become stressed. But when you are working on something really hard on something that you care about, you're passionate and it's yeah. a totally different emotion and your, to- your energy level is totally different as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, Nick, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time. It's always good to catch up and uh, it's good to see. I, I will say I do enjoy, you know, your unboxings and all the, all the stuff that you're doing out there. So count me as one of the people that you don't know is watching. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, likewise, man, you're, you're one of the mainstays of, you know, people I think of when I think of our industry with just your consistent, like high level of, you know, uh, not only your sort of expertise, but all the, the like funny comments, funny jokes, like, the levity woven into all the stuff you do. I'm a, I'm a big fan, fanboy of yours as well. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Well, hey, we'll have to uh, do this again sometimes, build each other up, and uh, yeah. we'll do that again, okay? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. All right, well, that's going to wrap up this edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. We'll see you next time.